What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And of course, you know it's your boy Behar Radio Shouty. And stepping in the building, we got some special guests off in this thing. Dave Mays, founder of The Source. Larry Hoover Jr. in this thing. You already know what time it is. Fellas, what's good with it, man? What's going on? Good to be here. Man, feeling good, feeling great. Now, I mean, Dave, first of all, I'm going to be all over the place with you. Same thing with you too, Larry, because I got questions for everybody in uh -huh. here, and I got questions for Dave's. Now, Dave, I want to talk about Breakbeat first. Okay. That's the new new. That's what's going on right now. What is it like coming back in this thing on the digital side with the audio and the podcast and the content creation? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's exciting. It's mm -hmm. exciting. I mean, I think there's uh, just an incredible opportunity in the space. You know, digital media as a whole is kind of like wide open, you know, in the sense that playing field is level you know these big companies that ran these radio stations these television networks and you know these magazine these newspapers you know they don't have those kind of advantages anymore they out here fighting just like me and you are you know Thanks. every day trying to figure it out and find the right right way so you know that to me is is is, is opportunity um number one and number two i mean podcasting is just it's a it's such a dynamic you know, space right now. I see it, it. You know, being around for a long time. It's been around for a while, but That's obviously right. it's starting to go through a, an explosive growth phase now. But it's still, yeah. still wide open. You know, uh, still so much room to grow, and it's a space where you know uh, new voices can be discovered, new ideas, new perspectives on things that you know you're not getting in all the other kind of mainstream corporate controlled you know media you know platforms that's out there. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, it was all about having a vision that there's a, a need for a network uh, to represent the interests of the hip hop community, okay, and to uh, speak, you know, in, in, in from their point of view on things. Um, hip hop now spans across three generations, right? So, you know, from Generation X, Millennials, Gen Z, there's, you know, millions and millions of, of us who've grown up from a young age being influenced by hip hop. And, you know, hip hop goes much deeper than the music. You know, it's a culture, it's, it's a, it shapes your, your way of thinking, your way of looking at the world to the point where, you know, all of us, I think, have certain ways of thinking and looking at things uh, that's going on out here in the world that we kind of share, but we don't see reflected in other media platforms, a comprehensive, you know, approach to any type of subject matter that's important in, in our lives and, and, and in the world. Um, so I think the music we've seen kind of create a divide between the older and the younger sides of the generation. So you hear that, oh, you know, this mumble <laughs> rap ain't real hip hop or, you know, that you guys are just old and out of touch. And, yeah. you know, while we might not like the same music at different ages on that spectrum there, beneath the surface of that music, the way we're thinking about things, when we watch a, a sports program, when we watch the news, the, what, how we feel, I think we all share a lot more in common. But And that's the void that I'm trying to fill similar to what the source represented for many years while I was running it, you know, as the magazine of hip hop, music, culture, and politics, you know, you flip through the source magazine, yeah, the unsigned hype, the mic ratings, the interview with, you know, Tupac, whatever the case may be, but people were also getting a lot of knowledge and information about many other, you know, things, whether it was health, whether it was fashion, whether it was business, things of that nature. And I think that's, again, kind of what's missing. Hip hop is bigger than it's ever been before, yeah. you know, it's e e everywhere, but we don't have uh, a strong branded platform that really represents us comprehensively. And so that's what I'm trying to do with Breakbeat and, and bridge the gaps so that we can be more powerful together because we have so much more in common than is being acknowledged. And as a, as a unit across those generations, we can have an even greater impact on the world than hip hop has already had. Dave, starting that source from a newsletter, getting that thing to being one of the biggest, craziest magazines in the game, conceptual, well, conceptualization of it to making it come into fruition, how the hell did you pull that off? <laughs> a newsletter to the most powerful magazine in the game? <laughs> I mean, I, I was always, you know, very uh, entrepreneurial growing up. Mm -hmm. I always had, you know, ideas to try to create different businesses. I had a, 
you know, a lawn mowing business in, in junior high, had yeah. business cards and 80, you know, clients. And so I, I was always very enterprising. Um, you know, I fell in love, you know, with hip hop uh, and the culture at a young age, growing up in, in Washington, D.C., just getting exposed to the music and the culture of the city, um, you know, fell in love with uh, go-go music in D.C., really, uh, and then hip hop. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just, you know, led me on, led me on the path. I ended up at, at, at Harvard uh, mm -hmm. for undergrad. The source was started out of my dorm room while I was in college, uh, 19 years old. It was yeah. a newsletter, single sheet of paper. Um, I was hosting a radio show actually on the Harvard station because uh, when I got to Harvard, it's like I didn't really fit in there on the campus, and it was a kind of a culture shock for me. The radio station I joined, and they gave me a little radio show late night on the weekends to play hip hop and go go. Go go didn't last that long; people hated it up there, you know. But that gave me an outlet into the city, Boston, yeah. and all the areas around Harvard. You know, there was a huge hip hop fan base up there, and so the radio show kind of became my way to tap into the community and you know get more into that. And and the source started as a newsletter for listeners to the radio show. Um, people always would call in and want to know information. You know, when is the new Big Daddy Kane single coming out? Who produced that new EPMD remix or whatever the case might be? We didn't have access to information. Uh, this is in, you know, 86, 87, 88 is when I actually start the source. Mm -hmm. There's no way to get information about hip hop. There's no magazine, no newspaper, no television, radio's not talking about it, there's nowhere to get info. So that was the original idea. Let me, yeah. you know, I was plugged into different record labels, you know, around the country that were doing hip hop, all the independent labels, so they would mail me their music early. I gotta get that new, yeah. you know, Stetsasonic advanced copy before anyone else so I could yeah. break that song and I would get information and that was how it started. And then the vision just grew just because, I, one, I just felt like hip hop, has so much power to, to, to change our world. You mm -hmm. know, it, it cuts across so many uh, lines that usually divide us. It's, it's one of the, if not the most uh, unifying kind of uh, force that we have in the world as far as being able to connect the dots across, you know, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're black, white, Chinese, you know, whether you live in, in Brooklyn or whether you live in, you know, South Africa, hip hop has that ability to cross all these boundaries and bring us together. So um, I, I felt it would be bigger, you know, than rock and roll or any other form of music. Right. And uh, I wanted to build, you know, a voice. Originally, it was like I'm trying to build the Rolling Stone of the hip hop generation. Rolling Stone was a, a magazine that started yeah. very small and became huge yes. and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, the, I, you know, my ideas just kept growing. The vision just kept growing as I got more and more from the newsletter to a little small magazine to actual magazine, and then to brand and starting to do all the things that I did with the Source brand. What was the first artist that you got on that Source cover that you felt like took the brand over the top? Oh man, well, I mean, we had so many great covers, but I, one of the covers that I think was really pivotal pivotal in our uh, growth and is probably one of my favorite covers of all time was uh, the cover of Dr. Dre when he had the gun to his head. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this came out a couple months right before the chronic dropped. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if you remember, uh, they had dropped, uh, uh, what was the song with Snoop um, uh, on the movie soundtrack? Deep Cover. Deep Cover. They had dropped Deep Cover and people, yeah. you know, knew that Dre had left you know, NWA, mm -hmm. there was all these rumors about what was going on, and I'm like, you know, I gotta track him down and I gotta get involved and, you know, figure <laughs> out what, what, this. what it is, yeah, yeah, and get to it early. I got like an advanced copy of The Chronic and I was mm -hmm. like, man, this is incredible. And I flew out to LA, ended up getting with Suge Knight, uh, convinced him to give us the exclusive cover and the photo shoot and everything, we did all that. And it came out, like I said, maybe a month or two before the chronic dropped. Yeah. So we were like helped really push that out to the world. And as yeah. you know, that's probably arguably the most influential hip hop album of all time. Exactly. Is, is the chronic. So that was a really important, you know, point for the source. When it came to the unsigned hype and breaking artists, did you feel like these artists that you all were breaking were gonna grow up to be biggest Miles, DMX, and some of the greatest of all doggone yeah. time? 
I mean, I, I wasn't personally the one reviewing the unsigned hype tapes. My man, Matty C., and there's a bunch of others, Riggs Morales and, uh, you know, John Schechter, who started, and a lot of people that worked on that column over the years mm -hmm. were, were um, telling the, the story of that in a podcast documentary series. Oh, that's hard. Uh, that we're working on Yeah, right that's kind of, hard. Kind of, kind of, oh! Kind of, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. That's crazy, because there's so many, like the ones you mentioned, there's Common, yeah. Mob Deep, you know, Eminem, J Electronica, uh, Capone and Noriega, David yeah. Banner, uh, all these people are part of, you know, unsigned hype in that column. So I think, you know, what drove us at the source was we loved hip hop. You know, mm -hmm. it was just that's what we lived, we loved, we were all young. You know, in those days, it, the whole staff was 25 and under, you know. And, uh, um, you know, it was just that passion for what we were doing and really believing that we, we and hip hop were making a difference and, like, you know, we're fighting against the rest of the world because, you know, hip hop was looked down upon by yeah. everybody. They didn't think it was going to last, whatever. They didn't like it. They thought it was, you know, negative, all the different things that we were dealing with in those days but uh so i think just that we just wanted to do the best in every area and we got a lot of demo tapes people started mailing us in demo tapes and we finally said look let's start a column we'll review a, a, a unsigned artist demo tape every month mm. and uh like you said dmx biggie i mean i personally got biggie his first you know his record deal with puff that's uh, crazy you know puff called me when uh uh they gave him his deal for Bad Boy uh, mm. up at Uptown. He was starting his own imprint, and he said, hey, I'm looking for artists. You know, who do you got? I went down the hallway to my man, Matty C. He was <laughs> like, well, we just put Biggie, you know, in the last month. He's incredible. Matty loved Biggie. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, well, bring that demo up to Puff, and he signed him like a month later.